Okay. Okay. So thank you for introduction. So my name is Rahan Getsan and today I will give you this presentation on behalf of uh, Dr. Tudor Williams who couldn't <laughs> come today. Uh, so what it is about, I will show you how does Cardiff Model Plus performs when we do interpolation and extrapolation in frequency and bias domain or space. So outline is as follows after short introduction. I will uh, show you a brief theory of Car Cardiff Model Plus and that is followed by uh, bias interpolation and extrapolation simulated examples which are uh, then uh, verified or compared with the uh, measured data. And uh, next I will show you also frequency interpolation and extrapolation simulated results and compare them with. So after these uh, examples about frequency interpolation and extrapolation, uh, I will uh, conclude. So behaviors models so far have shown that uh, they add a value in the design chain. So they allow us to move quickly from the uh, from the uh, measurement test bench to the simulator. Uh, but however, the models are typically considered to be bound uh, in terms of the impedance, bias, and frequency that we measure for the model extraction. So for the complex design or when we are passing the data to the uh, end customer, it is often useful to cover wide design space, particularly in terms of the frequency and bias. So this investigation uh, considers the possibility of interpolation and even extrapolation in frequency and bias space. So for this investigation, the vector load pool measurement was conducted on a 20 watt LDMOS transistor. Uh, and uh, model extraction measurements were conducted at 300, 350, 410, 450 and 520 megahertz, and at three different bias points, which are corresponding to the QEs and bias of 100, 200, and 300 milliamps. And there is also additional data that uh, was measured to allow for verification. Okay, so uh, let's look at the brief theory of the Cardiff Model Plus. So it is a behavior model uh, which is based on the polynomial strategy, on polynomial functions. And it's generalized to uh, end order uh, in terms of the relative uh, phase components. So how to extract the model? Uh, so first we do the vector load pool measurements. We get results as are shown in the left figure here. Uh, then we generated the model. So we actually extract the coefficients which are then saved into a file, which then we use uh, as a model in the simulator, where we can simulate the uh, measured device and the result is shown on the right figure, which corresponds to the measured results on the left figures. Okay. So the Cardiff model plus, since it's based on the polynomial functions, it's a single model, which actually uh, covers complete uh, Smith chart or the complete uh, load space. So everything is in one model. It's not just one impedance, as for example, it would be in a uh, lookup table approach. So that allows us to reduce model size. Uh, so we don't need a lot of data in the, in the model. And it uh, also allows us to interpolate where the interpolation uses model coefficients. So it doesn't interpolate between the measured data. It uses the polynomial functions itself. And even more, it also allows us to extrapolate since we have a trend of the function, so we can follow this trend and extrapolate outside of the measured area, uh, which is also not the case if we are bounded by the lookup table data. Uh, extraction process is also uh, simplified. So model is generated directly from the load pool data. So all we have to do is do the vector load pool measurement. We take the measured data, we extract the coefficients, and we can proceed to the simulation. Uh, the model generation, generation also allows us for automatic verification of the model accuracy. So actually we automatically can see how does the model and the data that is used for model uh, generation uh, fits to each other. 
And another important thing is to know what measurement fills the model. So we should know what we want to do from, with the model. Uh, do we want to simulate only fundamental frequency or we want to also uh, simulate the higher harmonics? Do we want to see the waveforms and so on? Uh, another uh, feature of this model is that uh, this, uh, it does not assume superposition. So uh, it's full mixing model. Uh, what means that uh, the model consists of the all possible uh, combinations of the fundamental harmonic and the higher harmonics. So it's not only one. And uh, that is particularly important for advanced modes of operation. Okay, on this slide here, uh, we can see uh, how does number of the coefficients or the order of the function affects on accuracy of the model. So the question is how many coefficients do we need to model this load pool grid uh, accurately, which is shown on the left figure. So on the right figure, we can see that if we move from three to four or four to six coefficients, we can significantly improve uh, accuracy of the model. But then if we move from six to seven or eight coefficients, uh, we don't gain any, uh, any accuracy anymore. Because so the sixth order is enough to fit the measured data, so we cannot fit it better with higher order functions. So let's now move to the examples of bias interpolation and extrapolation. So the first test looks at the ability of the model to interpolate in bias space. And first we will look at the ability of the model to predict performance at the bias points used to fill the model. So our uh, data that is used to model generation and it is 100, 200 and 300 uh, milliamps. Then next thing we do is we simulate two further bias points. It's 150 and 250 milliamps. And we compare to the measure that did not form the part of the model. And the final test is to look at the extrapolation. So for this test, we generate a model only from the 100 milliamps and 200 milliamps data. And we then simulate uh, 300 milliamp, uh, milliamp bias point. So let's first look at the initial model verification. So here on the left, uh, hand side we can see modeled results and on the right hand side we can see measured results. So above we can see the uh, gain output power and power rate efficiency versus uh, input power. Uh, and we can see that these curves fit quite well uh, with the measured results. We can only see that uh, the power added efficiency differs slightly uh, for the highest drive levels. Otherwise, the, the gain and uh, power, output power uh, numbers or values fit uh, very good. If you look in the impedance space, we can also see that the fit for maximum power added efficiency and uh, uh, maximum output power fits quite well. There is just a small difference both in the value and in the impedance. What else we can see here, that simulation is done for the more impedance points, so for the wider load space than it was measured. So we can see that model does not break apart if we actually extrapolate outside of the measured impedance space. So it still has sens sensible results. This is another uh, bias point. So before we had 100 milliamps, this is for 200 milliamps. Uh, here we can again see that uh, power rate efficiency, output power and gain fits very well. In this case, uh, again, we have slight difference in the power rate efficiency for the higher drive level, but the shape of the, of the curve is, fits very well to the measured results. Uh, and uh, in the case of the impedance space, we have some difference in maximum uh, power rate efficiency. It's around uh, four or five percentage points, uh, but the maximum uh, output power fits again very, very well to the measured results. Similar thing we can see for the last initial bias points, 300 uh, milliamps. We have very, very, very good fit uh, in all three cases. So for the power rate efficiency, output power and gain. And the same is in the impedance space. So very, very good fit. So let's now see how it does, how it performs when we try to interpolate. So here we 
simulate bias point of 150 milliamps, which was not part of the uh, data that makes a model. So we can see that, again, we have quite good fit with the measured results in gain. So the, for the highest dry level, gain is simulated gain is 8.8 .8 dB, uh, measured is 8.9. Output power is 43.7 um, dBm. Uh, simulated measured is 43.8 dBm. Uh, power rate efficiency drops Simulated power rate efficiency drops a little bit again for the highest drive level, so the, but the rest of the curve fits very well. And again, in the impedance space, we have quite good fit for the very good fit for the maximum output power uh, and efficiency, uh, maximum power rate efficiency, but it's, it is slight off in the value uh, and in uh, impedance, but it's not far away from it, so it's very good fit as well. This is another example of interpolation, so 250 milliamps. And here we can see, uh, again, that it works very well in uh, all three cases for the gain, output power, and efficiency. So the curve shape is the same, and the numbers are uh, quite similar. Impedance, again, we have very good match in the maximum output power, power rate efficiency, is slightly off, but it's quite good, actually. And then we have next example, so it is bias extrapolation. So now we, the model is generated only with the measurement uh, in, at bias points of 100 and 200 milliamps, and we do the simulation for 300 milliamps bias point. So here, the figures are showing original model with contains measurement of 300 milliamps. We have truncated model without that bias point and measure data. So we can actually see excellent extrapolation performance. Uh, curves are very similar and the numbers are extremely close also. So we have around, I think this is around 70% uh, power rate efficiency for the all, in all three figures, 43 dBm output power and uh, around 10 dB in gain for all three cases. In impedance space, again, excellent extrapolation performance. So maximum power rate efficiency is around 73%. Uh, impedances are very close. The same is valid for the maximum output power. So we have a very good match. Uh, this figure here uh, shows the gain curves and compares the simulated uh, curves. So the lowest one is 100 milliamps, uh, upper one is 200 milliamps, which are forming the model, and the highest one is 300 milliamps gain, so this one is uh, extrapolated. If we compare that with the measured data on the right side, we can see that uh, it fits extremely good, so the trend and the, the shape of the curves is very similar. So now let's move to the frequency interpolation and extrapolation. So uh, here we first look at the ability of the model to predict performance at the frequency points used to fill the model. So this was 300, 410, and 520 megahertz. And then next what we do is simulate uh, interpolated frequency points 350 and 450 megahertz, and we compare them to the measured results. And the final test is to look at the extrapolation. So here, we, uh, for this test, the data that fills the model is 300, 350, 410, and 450 megahertz. And then we simulate the uh, at frequency of 500. Actually, it, is, it will be 520 megahertz. And then we repeat that at the bottom end of the band. So let's look at the initial model verification. The bias point for all these cases is 100 milliamps. So for initial case, we can see that simulated and measured maximum output power and simulated and measured maximum power rate efficiency fits extremely good. We have all those, almost the same numbers here. And then let's look at the interpolation, verification. So for 350 megahertz interpolation, 
we can see that uh, the fit between the gain and output power is very good. And for the power edit efficiency, it fits well until the last point or the highest drive level. So here drops for a couple of uh, percentage points, like it's actually two percentage points. In the impedance space, we have quite good match, 77.9% power edit efficiency. It's simulated and 78.4 is measured. Output power, we have 43.9 uh, dBm simulated and 43.8 measured. Uh, in terms of the impedance as such, we also have very good match. Okay. So uh, here is another uh, frequency interpolation example at 450 megahertz. We can see the same trend. So very good fit for the gain and output power, very good fit for the power edit efficiency. Only the last point or highest drive level differs. It breaks apart a little bit. In impedance space, we have Again, very good match. It's not as well as at 350, but it's really not far away. So let's now look uh, frequency extrapolation. So in this case, we simulate 520 megahertz uh, when, uh, when the model is uh, generated with uh, fewer uh, frequency uh, parts. So the 520 megahertz is removed from the from the model generation. So here again, we can see the original model simulation results, truncated model results, and measured data. So we can see again that gain and output power performs quite well, and really power rate efficiency is dropping significantly for the, for the last or for the highest drive level. And the reason for that is shown in the next slide or explained a little bit more. So what happens at 520 or at 450 megahertz, the power sweep is not as high as we sweep here. So here we sweep input power up to 30 point, uh, 38 dBm and measurement uh, at 450 megahertz, which is part of the model, is up to approximately 36 dBm. So actually what model does when it comes to 36 dBm, if we go further, it doesn't fit very well anymore. So that actually tells us that it is important to uh, do the power sweep as high as we want to simulate later. So we need in this part, we cannot uh, get out of the, of the measured data or what we have in the measured file. And now we can check frequency extrapolation at the low frequency end. And here we have very good extrapolation performance. So now the frequency that we simulate is 300 megahertz. Uh, and our model contains the input power levels that are used here. So we have measurements up to around 34 or 36 dBm. And here we simulate up to 32 dBm. And we can see that gain, output power, and efficiency fits very well uh, to the measured result. The same in the impedance space, we have very good extrapolation performance in original, uh, within the original truncated and measured data. So the maximum power rate efficiency and output power is quite similar. And in the end to conclude, so these investigations have shown that the interpolation of the Cardiff Model Plus gives excellent performance in both bias and the frequency space. Uh, while care must be taken with extrapolation, it is shown that it is possible to get very good results in, extra in extrapolation provided the data integrity, if the data integrity is maintained. And uh, this opens the application to a wider set of use cases, allowing the possibility of a more global behavior model. Thank you for attention. Mm -hmm.